Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday morning to you. I hope everybody's having a great Sunday morning. I hope you're doing well. I hope uh, that you are enjoying this wonderful fall weather down here in the deep south. Uh, some people will say in the dirty south. Uh, and we've been having some great weather, and I hope you've been enjoying our fall weather. I hope it's here to stay. Uh, so I appreciate you being here this morning. Listen, welcome to the Sunday Sermon. I'm Valerie Oliver, founding pastor of First Liberty Baptist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, we are not your traditional Baptist church. We are not your typical Baptist church. We are all inclusive. And we want you to know that uh, we love you no matter what your background is, no matter where you're from, who you love. Uh, we are just welcoming you, whoever you are. Are you a whosoever? People are quick to throw up uh, John 3.16. Well, John 3.16 says whosoever. Are you a whosoever? I'm a whosoever. It didn't say who you had to be or who you had to love or who you couldn't love or whether you're black, white, green, yellow, red. It just says whosoever. Hey, Amen. Thank God for that. Well, listen, today is the first Sunday of October. And uh, today uh, we celebrate the Lord's Supper. So we want you to join us in the sharing of the Lord's Supper at the end of our sermon today. So get yourself a, a cracker or a, a piece of potato chip or uh, something that you can use to represent uh, the bread and then get you a glass of juice or something that you can use to represent the juice or the fruit of the vine. Amen. And so we want you to participate with us at the end of our uh, sermon today. Also, uh, I want to remind you that October is Breast Care Awareness Month. I don't like to say breast cancer awareness anymore. I, I say breast care. Breast care awareness uh, just sounds better, sounds more positive. So get your mammogram. Men, if you haven't, get your mammogram. So Because men can also uh, get breast cancer, and I know you know that. So without further ado, we are going to uh, worship a little bit in here. Yes, we're going to worship a little bit, and then we're going to uh, pray, and then we're going to go on with the message that the Lord has for us today. All right, let's worship a little bit. Amen. I'll be right back. Father, we're coming out of this house tonight. We're on the Father's wheel right now. And it's not comfortable. It doesn't feel good. But we need to just take solace in the fact that even though it may not feel good right now, as long as I'm in his hands, I know that everything it's going to be all right. Just touch somebody, look him in the face, and tell him I'm in his hands. Listen. He sees. He sees the tears you cry. And he shares. And sometimes, sometimes you wonder why he, he allows, allows you, you to go, go through what you go through. What you go through. But listen. Slip up those hands and give him some praise. Oh, I can't get no help in here. That's a good place to bless him. Listen, listen to the words. See your day.
Even when the sun is up, yes it is. And from the top of your lungs, you shall. What shall I do? Can I tell you one thing? Remember, just know he has his hands. He has his hands. Yes, he does. He said, I'll see you through. He will, he will provide, yes he will, yes he will, just know he has his hands on. Sometimes you feel so alone, like a child lost with no home, they keep telling
God has his hands on you. Amen. Good morning, Roz. How are you this morning? I'm so glad you joined us. Listen, y'all, thank you so much for being here. I want you to know that we can rest assured that even though we're going through troubling times with everything that we're seeing happening in the world, we have more than one pandemic. There's more than COVID-19. There is the pandemic of racism. We have all kinds of issues going on in our lives today, not to even mention the uh, our personal issues. There are personal issues going on in our lives today. And so y'all listen, I want you to know that the Lord wants to encourage you this morning and let you know that you can trust that he is with you and that he knows everything about you. In the midst of all that we're going through, God knows everything about you and he is with you. And so guess what? We're going to pray and then we're going to go on into our message. Let us pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for the many blessings that you have so graciously bestowed upon us. You are our Heavenly Mother as well. You are a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Jehovah Rapha, our healer. You are whoever we need you to be with. And we thank you for being with us and letting us know that we are never, ever alone. We thank you for letting us know, Lord, that you are forever with us and that our relationship with you is the most important relationship that we can ever have. And so, Lord, we thank you for being so good to us. We thank you for this brand new day, this brand new month. We thank you for all the, all the riches and all the glory. Some are spiritual, not all material, but some are spiritual. There are some blessings that money cannot buy. And Lord, we thank you for them all. And Lord, we, we lift up those who are, are fighting for their lives in the hospitals today. We lift them up. We ask that you would bless them that you would help them, Lord, in this time of need. You said in your word that you are our healer. And we know you're still in the healing business. Many of us have lost loved ones due to certain illnesses, including COVID-19. But Lord, we know that you will lift up our heads. We know that you will comfort us. And we ask that you would give us all peace that passes all understanding. Whatever our issue may be today, Lord, whatever our problem may be today, we know, Lord, that you know all about it because you know everything about us and you care for us. And so, Lord, we ask that as we approach your word today, that you would help us to understand. We ask that you would help us approach it with spiritual hearts and spiritual ears, Lord. And Lord, I must decrease and you increase. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Listen. I'm telling you, y'all, the most important relationship that you can have in this life is a relationship with God. You never know when trouble will come. Life always is unpredictable. Life can always throw you a curveball. Life can throw surprises into, to your, into your, your daily routine. Things can catch you off guard. But let me remind you that nothing catches God off guard. Nothing surprises God. 
Hallelujah. God knows everything. And nothing ever catches him by surprise. And I just want to remind you this morning, beloved, that Almighty God, the one who created the heavens and the earth and the seas and the universe and everything therein, has his hands on you. Just like the song said, he has his hands on you, beloved. I know sometimes you wonder if he does. I know sometimes you might even wonder where he is. Is he with you? You know, uh, does he love you? You know, and I, and, I, and I know you wonder, you wonder, well, uh, where is he during my time of trouble? Where is he during my time uh, uh, of need? Uh, he doesn't seem to hear my prayer. He doesn't seem to, to listen to me. He doesn't seem to hear me. Well, let me tell you something, beloved. God hears your prayers. He is right there with you. Once you enter into a relationship with Almighty God, there are no breakups. You know what a breakup is. Most of us have been through a breakup. You have a relationship with somebody, you've been through a, a, a breakup. If you haven't, God bless you. you. You're wonderful. God bless you. He's been good to you. And so listen, but if you have been through a breakup, you know what I'm talking about. But when you are in a relationship with God, there are no breakups. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You see, God knows you. And, 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 and no matter what, and no matter where you are, or what you've been through, or what happens in your life, there are no breakups with God. I want to share with you two reasons why I say that. And some of you might say, well, well, listen, uh, 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 I'm not sure if, if I'm still in a relationship with the Lord. It, it doesn't seem like it. Look like to me every time I turn around, there's something going on in my life. Look like to me every time I turn around, there's some trouble. Are you sure God is with me? Are you sure God is on my side? I'm sure God is with you and he's right by your side. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Let me tell you two reasons why I know that that's true, beloved. The first reason is because God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. He knows everything. And I'm going to give you some Bible behind it. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 5. I'm not going to even hold you long today. I just have to share this with you because I want to remind you, beloved, that God is with you and God knows everything about you. Don't you know that God knows more about you than you know about yourself? Look at Psalm 139. Come with me to Psalm 139 and let's look at verses 1 through uh, 5. You have searched me. This is David. Oh, I love David. David was a worshiper. Mm, he was a worshiper. And by the way, let me remind you that he was also a warrior. Yeah, look, look, look. Sometimes, it, you know, the Bible tells us sometimes it's time for war. So guess what? My, my, my lesson on, on Sunday was stand by. Sometimes you got to defend yourself. If you have to defend yourself, if it comes to that, then that's what you do. Okay? But I love David. He was a worshiper. David loved music and he loved the Lord. And he loved to worship God. And David said, you have searched me, Lord. You know me. You know, you know me now. We're talking about a relationship here now, y'all. We're talking about a relationship with God. Some people don't think it's possible to have a relationship with God. But God said himself, how can you love me and, and, and who you can't see and, and hate the brother or uh, 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 human mankind that you see every day? He said, you're lying. If, if, if you hate the brother or the sister that you see every day, you hate uh, a person because of their skin color or because of who they love or because of who they are and then you say you love me who you have never seen you ain't telling the truth you ain't telling the truth you know because if you if you really love me you would love your sisters and brothers in Christ even if they don't like you even if you don't like me see 
See, uh, I still pray for you. I pray for everybody in the hospital this morning, including Donald Trump. And I pray that the Lord will draw him nearer to him, that he would help him become a better man, a more godly person. I pray that in private, that, that he will become a more private person. And if the Lord brings him through this, that he will give God the glory. And he won't think he did it because he's so strong and so almighty himself with his narcissistic self. And I don't mean to talk about it, but I, I, I did pray for him. And I prayed that, that, that God would, would, would heal him, but that he would heal him so that he would give him the glory. And that he would be a better person and realize that it was God who brought him through. Even your enemies, you pray for them. Yeah, you ain't got to pray that they be uh, God, uh, 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 bless them so that they can have all the necessary things that they like. And so that they can be happy and have this and have. No, 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 you ain't got to pray that. You pray that they, that your enemies, you pray that they get closer to the Lord. See. You pray that God will, will heal them, but at the same time, pray that God will touch their hearts so they'll realize where their healing came from. See, 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 see. some people are so evil and, and so mean, they act like they, they don't know God exists. You see, but, 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 but I pray uh, uh, for his healing too, but that he'll realize that there is a God in him. That God sits high and looks low. Woo! I'm telling you now. So look, David, he said, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. God knows you, beloved. He knows you, I'm telling you. The scripture tells us that he knows how many hairs you have on your head. Woo! You know how many hairs you have on your head. You don't know how many hairs you have on your head, no, but God does. He knows exactly how many hairs you got in your head and how many of them are gray and how many of them are brown and how many fell out when you combed your hair this morning. Because that's natural. And, you know, when you comb your hair, it's natural for your hair to grow and for the old hair to, uh, 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 to, uh, to, to come out when you comb it to make room for the new hair. So he knows how many you lost this morning when you combed your hair. And he knows how many you have. How many hairs on your head. We're not even capable, I don't believe, of counting the hairs on our head. And, and, and yet God knows how many hairs you have on your head. Ooh, that tells me that he pays great detail to us. That gives great, he gives great attention to us. He knows everything about us. He knows what's going on in our bodies. And, and when something ain't right, even when the doctors don't know about it, he knows all about it. He knows everything. Beloved, that's what it means when we say he's omniscient. He's all-knowing. He knows everything. David went on and he said, you know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You, 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 know, you know what my thoughts are, are, are even before I say it. You know what my thoughts are before they even come out of my mouth. Because cause our words are, are thoughts that we express. And before we even express our thoughts, before we even say what we're thinking, God already knew we were going to think it before we knew it. Woo! I'm talking about an awesome God. And you, you mean to tell me you don't know that you can have a close, I'm talking about a close relationship with God. Oh, yeah, he's almighty. He's, he's powerful. He's omniscient, but he still wants a relationship with us. Hmm. Why would Almighty God want a relationship with us? You know, some of us can be so mean sometimes. Some of us get on each other's nerves. You know, we get mad with one another sometimes. sometimes but, but when you have this loving God who's, who's holy and righteous and, and does no wrong, who wants a relationship with us? I mean, this huge, powerful God who spoke a word and said, let there be, and there was, wants a relationship with you and with me. Why? Because 
because he loves us. Oh, because he loves us, beloved. He loves us. Amen. Yes, he does. Yes, he does, beloved. I see you. I see you, one. I, I, I see Antoinette. He loves us, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. You discern my going out. Look. He knows when you get ready to leave the house. He sees everything you do. He knows what you're going to do before you leave the house. He knows what's going on at the place where you're going before you get there. Mm. He knows. I'm telling you, he knows everything. He, and he knows your lying down, David said. You know my lying down. You know when I come and I, and I, and I, and I take my shower and I get in the bed. You know when I get in the bed and pull the covers over my head and go to sleep. Mm. He said, you are familiar with all my ways. Ooh. Oh, anybody know you like that? If, 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 if somebody knows you like that, then, then that person knows you. That person really knows you. That's that, 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 now, that's a good relationship. And it can be a family member. It can be a family member. You know, family members know us. See, it can be a family member. It can be a spouse. You see, it can be a partner, you know. They know you. If you're with somebody who really knows you, then you have a good relationship with them. They ought to act like they know you now. Because see, cause see, if they really know you and they care, see, knowing you and caring about you are two different things. See, see a lot of times people will say things that hurt your feelings and they don't even care. But, 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 but they say it intentionally to hurt your feelings on mad day. But if they really cared, they would think about how you would feel when they say what they're about to say. Why? Because they care. So if, you, if, you, if, if somebody really cares about you, see, if they know you, that's one thing. But if they know you and care about you, that's another thing. You got somebody that really cares about you, that's wonderful. Well, God loves and cares about you and knows you. Even in some of our mean and cruel ways, because some of us can be aggravated sometimes, including me, and some of us can get on each other's nerves, but God still looks beyond our faults and sees our needs. He looks past all that. He doesn't even, his, his concern for us has nothing to do with us and everything to do with you. It goes by who he is, not who we are. Mm. If he went by who we are, oh, we'd be in a world of trouble. We'd be in a world of trouble. <laughs> we wouldn't get no blessings. I, th I thank God uh, uh, the way that he treats me and the way that he loves me is not based on me. It's based on him. See, and who he is. He's a loving God. See, I'm just trying to tell you, beloved, this morning that in the midst of all the trouble and all the chaos and all the, 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 the surprises and things that catches off God in, uh, uh, guard in this life, uh, uh, it's good to know Jesus. There's a song that said it's good to know Jesus. It's good to know it because when you know him, you can make it through these trying times because he's in a relationship with you. Your relationship with somebody who loves you, somebody who knows you better than you know yourself. And not only does he know you, but he cares about you. See, remember, there's a difference. David said, you know, you know me, you, you, you're familiar with all my ways. He said, before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. He said, listen to this, you hear me in behind and before. That means God, you know, God, you know, you know my mom used to tell me all the time, God is everywhere when I was little. God is everywhere. And I didn't quite understand that at that time. I was really little, you know. God is everywhere. What you mean? God is everywhere. I was looking in the dryer. I was looking in the in the closet. I was looking at my what you mean? God, but 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 God is is omnipresent, and we're gonna get to that next. He's behind. David said, You're behind me and you're before me. 
How can somebody be behind you and before you at the same time? How can somebody be behind you and in front of you at the same time? Only God, only God in his, in his omnipresence. See, he, he said, and you lay your hand upon you. Ooh, that's why I picked that song. Your hand. God has his hands on you. He has his hands on you, beloved. I don't care what happens. God has his hands on you. Don't you forget that. Whatever you go through, remember God has his hands on you. He has his hands on you. See? See? And that's a good relationship, I'm telling you. That's a good relationship. He said, you, you are behind me and before me. You got me boxed in. You, 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 you got me covered, Lord. I'm in the secret place. I'm, I, I, I'm covered. I'm in the place of refuge. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in the ark of safety. See. And so, beloved, that's one of the reasons I tell you that that God is 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 is, is all knowing because He knows everything about you, and that and that and that the relationship you have with Him makes all the difference in the world. Especially in times of trouble. Let me tell you the second reason why I say that God knows you and, and that he's there no matter what and no matter where you are. And the second reason is because he's not only omniscient and all-knowing, he's also omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. That's what my mama was talking about, and I didn't understand it. But he's everywhere at the same time. Ooh, he's all over this world. That's what Jesus meant when he said, uh, when I leave and go back and send the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, you'll be able to do greater works. See, because Jesus could only do uh, 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 works wherever he was in the physical body. He can only uh, be at one place at one time. But when he sent the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is in all of us who believe. And we are all over the world. And so it, 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 it does not matter where we are. God is going to do his work through all of us. Wherever we are, all over the world, greater work more works because we're not in just one place we are everywhere Ooh. god is everywhere we are don't you know when you walk in the mall god walks in the mall mm. don't you know that we are the church that's why it don't bother me that we can't go to the building right now that don't, that don't bother me because we are the church not the brick and mortar we are. We make up the church. Don't you know when you walk in your house, God walks in? Because he lives in you. Don't you know wherever you go, God is with you and in you and upon you? God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. And see, in these trying times, beloved, know that. God is everywhere. You know, uh, uh, COVID won't let you go to, to the hospital and see your loved one. But God is there. God is there. When they went in, God was with them. When they went in there, God was with them. You just pray. That's all right. Just pray. God is with you and with them. You can't go in, but God is there. Woo! Hallelujah. God is everywhere. Listen to what David said. He asked the question. He said, where can I go? Let me verse 7, if you're following along. He said, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I go? Where can I, how can I get away from you? Not that he wanted to, but it was, it was, a, it was sort of an, a rhetorical question. It was, a, it was a question that he knew there was a good answer to. He knew that there's nowhere I can go without your presence. There's nowhere I can go where you are not. He said, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Who do you welcome God's presence in your life? Do you welcome his presence today? Don't you know that God's presence uh, is, is, is filled with joy and peace? Don't you know that, that God's presence is, is filled with healing? 
and calmness and, and, and peace? Don't you know that in the presence of God is everything you need? And to think that he's always with you, just acknowledge him, that's all. Just know he's there. Just know he's there because he is. Where can I go to flee from your presence, David said. Y'all not want to flee from his presence, beloved. Some people really, believe it or not, don't like God's presence. They are afraid of God's presence because they're walking in darkness. That's all. That's the only person or, or who does not like the presence of God because God is light. God is love and light. And people who walk in darkness are uncomfortable in God's presence. I'm just being real with you. And when you come around and you're full of light because God lives in you, they don't like you. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. I know I'm right. Because when he lives in you and that light shines and the presence of God is, is upon you, people can sense that. Some people don't like God's presence, but beloved, I tell you, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like God's presence. You know, stay in God's presence. Live in God's presence. I'm telling you, we're living in a time when it's good to know the Lord. It's good to have a close relationship with the Lord and to be in his presence. Hey, David said, if I go up to the heavens, you're there. See, he's just imagining places he can go. And he said, even in these places I'm imagining in my mind, you, you, you are there because there's nowhere you cannot be if you, if you, if you want to. If you want to be there, you can be there no matter where it is. He said, if I go up to the heavens, see, he, he, he trusted God's presence so much that he imagined even if he goes to the highest place uh, that he could go, even into heaven. Or he said, even if I go and make my bed in the depths, you are there. He said, even in the lowest depths of the dead, where the dead dwell, those who don't know you, uh, God, you, you are there too. It wasn't nowhere he could imagine where God cannot be. Oh, my God. Hmm. That ought to be comforting to you, beloved. That ought to be comforting to you. That ought to be a blessing to you to know, beloved, that you are never alone. There's nowhere you can go without God. Woo! If I rise on the wings of the dawn, David said, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me tight. NIV says, fast, will hold me fast and fasten to something. He said, if I, if I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. You have a God who does not even see darkness. He sees evil. Oh, yes, don't get me wrong now. He sees evil. He knows everything that's going on. He knows what people do to you. He knows when people talk about you. He knows what happens to you. He knows everything. See, he knows darkness, but it does not faze him because he knows that he's all powerful and nobody loves us like he does. And he knows that. And he's not worried about the darkness. Look at what David said. The night will shine like the day. He said to you, darkness is like light. To God, there is no darkness. Because whatever the devil meant to harm you, God is going to turn it around and make it work for your good. There is no darkness. Beloved. Amen. No darkness. He said, he said the night, even the night, even darkness will shine like the day. For darkness is as light to you. Because God is control, in control of darkness too. He's in control of everything. If darkness comes against you and comes into your life, guess what? God, God can handle that thing. He can, he can handle it. No need to worry. No need to fret. 
And that's all I'll stop by to tell you today, beloved. I wanted to encourage you today to listen. Look, God is omniscient and he's omnipresent. He knows everything about you. And he's always with you. He's everywhere you go. Everywhere. If you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, he knows you and you you know him, and he's with you everywhere. Everywhere you go. You don't have to worry about it. In times like these, it's all right. It's still all right, beloved. Don't you worry about it. You see, as chaotic and racist and troubling as this world can be, you can still have peace. You can still have joy. You can still have a compass in your life. And everything can be falling apart around you, but you still all right. You still have your peace. Because Jesus said, peace, my peace I leave with you. Not, not as the world gives, but my peace. Peace that passes all understanding. That's how some people can look at you and not understand why you're not breaking down and why you're not falling apart. That's why they don't understand. First of all, they don't know God. And the second thing, they don't understand you and the Lord has a relationship. Y'all have a relationship. They don't understand how you hold it up so well. It could be anything that goes on in your life. Loss of job, not enough money, can't pay your bills, a loss of a loved one loss of a friendship or relationship or divorce or whatever and you holding up and walking around like uh, everything is all right and it is i'm not saying it's not affecting you now I'm not saying that you don't cry sometimes I'm not saying that it didn't bother you but guess what it's not going to consume you and it's not going to take over your life because the peace of god which passes all understanding will keep your heart and your mind talking about a relationship with God this morning. A relationship with Almighty God. In the midst of it all, you can still have peace because God knows and loves you. And you can't get away from him if you try. You can't get away from him. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You see, once you're in a relationship with the Lord, beloved, there's no turning back. There's no breakup. There's no, no divorce. That ought to be comforting to us. He ain't going nowhere. He's not going to leave you. You might try to leave him, but guess what? He knows how to get your attention and get you to, to come back. Y'all know some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You can turn away and back away a little bit if you want to. He, he has a way. He knows how to get our attention and say, hey, uh, I haven't heard from you lately. You see, uh, you haven't talked to me. And sometimes he will allow certain situations that will bring you to your knees. Oh, there you are. talk to him every day. All the time. That's how it is when you're in a relationship with somebody, a real relationship. You talk to him every day. You talk to him. You, 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 you are close to them. You know them. You know them. And, and whenever you can, you spend time with them. If you can be that way with, with your with your wife or your husband or your or your friends, uh, what do you think God wants you to be with Him? How do you think He wants you to treat Him? Wants you wants you to be in a relationship with with Him too. Her or whoever your spirit, whoever you call Him, Jehovah, Yahweh, Yeshua, whatever you call God, it doesn't matter. God has many names. God just is. You can be in a relationship with God. So take your relationship with the Lord seriously, beloved. 
because we're living in trying times. You need to know that he's there and that he cares and that he knows everything about you and that he'll never leave your side. Wherever you are, there he is. Amen. Almighty, true, and living, one and only God will never leave you. And he will never let you out of his sight. Woo! I praise his holy name. Bless his holy name. Glory be to God. He will never leave our side. And he will never let us out of his sight. That's comforting. That lets us know, beloved, that we're never alone. And, and no matter what comes against us, no matter what happens in our lives, God is there. He's right there with you. Amen, Val. Yes, he's right there. He's right here. Yes, he is. Glory to his name. And I'm telling you, if you're not in a relationship with God, now is your opportunity. He's standing there with open arms, waiting for you. He said, I stand at the door and I knock the door of your heart. Some people say that's the door of the church, where we are the church. He said, I'll, if, you, if you open the door, I'll come in and sup with you and you with me. In other words, I'll come in and I'll, I'll, I'll commune with you. I, I'll come in and I'll have a relationship with you and we're going to talk and, and we're going to get you through this old mean and cruel world until there's a new heaven and a new earth. He said, I'm going to get you through it. If you want to know that Lord, that God, then Jesus said, come through me. I know everybody don't believe that, but that's all right. We can agree to disagree. But the Lord said that this is, this is my provision for your deliverance. This is my provision, my son, for your deliverance, your salvation. And Jesus said, come unto me. I'm not white and I don't have blonde hair and blue eyes. That's a picture they painted. And I'm not, I'm not hateful or racist or anything like that. I'm just saying, you know, that the reality is that nobody uh, who comes from that region of the world where Jesus is from has blonde hair and blue eyes. That's the reality of it. That's, that's all I'm saying. Nothing against my, my Caucasian brothers and sisters. I'm just speaking the, the truth, the truth. Nobody that comes from that region has blonde hair and blue eyes. And Jesus said to us this morning, I don't look like that. Never did. Where they get that picture from? See, so he's inviting you. To him. Just pray and say, Lord, I, I need you. These are trying times and there's so much uncertainty today. I need you. Save me. They say you can forgive me for all my sins and everything I've said and done wrong and, and that they're forever forgiven. Forever forgiven. By your blood. Washed by the blood of the Lord. If that's true, Lord, come and save me. Show me the purpose you have for my life. Why am I here? Come and, and, and save me. I want you to, 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 to be with me and to be upon me and, and to, 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 to spend time with me. And I want to know you. That's the best relationship you can ever have in your entire life. The best and most important relationship of your entire life. And if you say that prayer, you pray it, let us know. We want to pray with you and we want to pray for you. 
Amen. And I'm telling you, that's the best decision you can ever make. And I congratulate you if you did. And so we want you to worship with us when we get back to church. We want to pray with you. So let us know if you receive Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, Yeshua. And we want you to worship with us. Go where you feel comfortable, but we would love to have you. Amen. Well, listen, y'all. Since it is the Lord's Supper Sunday at First Liberty, we want you to participate with us in acknowledging Jesus' suffering and what he did at Calvary for us. And so, at this time, we want you to participate with us um, in this time that we we are sharing the Lord's Supper. Make sure. Okay. So, beloved, clear your thoughts in your minds and think about Him being with you. Knowing what He's done for us. Knowing that He suffered. He bled. He died on the cross. And I want you to believe that the Lord loves you and that that's why he did what he did on the tree. Amen. And so don't you forget that. I want you to get your cracker. I want you to get your juice. Let's remember Calvary. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for an encouraging word this morning. We thank you for remembering us at all times, everywhere, and in everything we do. And we thank you for reminding us that you are always with us. And that you love us dearly and you know more about us than we know about ourselves. And now, Lord, as we partake of your broken body and your shed blood and these, these emblems that represent your blood and your broken body, Lord, bless what we do. And you said in your word, as often as we partake of these emblems, remember you. Remember yourself. And we thank you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. On the night before Jesus was crucified, he sat and he had supper with his disciples. And he held up the bread and he said, This bread is the new covenant in my body. And he took the cup, Lord. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And he said, as often as you partake of this, remember me. Beloved, in that same spirit, let us now eat and drink together. broken body in the shed. God bless you, beloved. Thank you all for joining me today. I love you from the very bottom of my heart. I want you to continue to join me. God bless you. Happy birth and a clear killing. God bless you all. Um, very, very sad. That's all right, that's all right. <laughs>
glad to know that you are here. Thank, thank you for letting me know you are here. God bless you all. Thank you so much for being here. It really means a lot to me to, to see you here joining me. I will be back on Thursday at 7 o'clock a.m. live with our weekly uh, Real Talk Inspiration. And so we want you to join us. And of course, if you can't catch us live at 7 a.m., then you can always go back and watch the uploaded video. Also, uh, if you have friends and family members who do not have a Facebook account, they can catch the sermons and the real inspiration um, on Thursday mornings uploaded on YouTube. And the link to our YouTube channel is on our Facebook page, the First Liberty Church page. And you'll see right at the top uh, the link to our YouTube channel. And uh, so if you can, you know, just catch up any, any, anywhere. You can watch any sermon, any, any uh, uh, inspirational uh, talk. So thank you again. I love you from the very bottom of my heart. Happy October. Get your mammograms if you haven't already. You stay safe. And you all, you, you have a wonderful Sunday. Val, you have a fantastic Sunday yourself. God bless you all. I love you from the bottom of my heart. And I'll see you next time.